Okay, you probably got a message about that. And then I will share my screen. Let's see, we have someone else just joined. All right, so give me a thumbs up if you can see my red and white welcome slide. Great. Okay. So welcome everyone to the second meeting of the Cross-Cultural Trainers Network. Thank you for being here. This wouldn't happen without your participation and you showing up and you discussing in the forum online. So thanks a lot. I hope you've discovered how it goes inside the platform. It's a really nice user-friendly platform. I didn't build it. It's a company called Mighty Networks. Um, I just didn't even spend that much effort actually to get it rolling. I mean, it was so user-friendly, so intuitive. And, you know, maybe I watched a couple of tutorials and that was it. I just entered some information and then boom, there it was. But um, inside the platform, you can probably see there are different sections like events. Now there are three events, including this one advertised in there. No, sorry, four events, including this one. Um, the platform is open for people like you, the members, to launch your own events. You can launch your own questions. If you, for example, you're going to deliver a training and you you you're you're having a, a you know like a mind block, and you can't think of a good activity for a certain topic, you can post it in the network. Somebody will probably answer you and help you out. And um, there's lots of things that I plan to do inside there. For now, it's these, you know, biweekly sessions that are like free information sharing sessions. And today, uh, oh yeah, one more reminder is just about to download the app if you haven't already. So this is what it looks like inside the iPhone, iStore, um, Apple Store, whatever. So this is the icon and then you can, uh, this is the link. You can download it. Then it's going to ask you find a network you belong to. Then enter the, the name of the network, sign in. And from then on, you can access everything from your phone, which I think is better than always going on the laptop if you want to avoid it. All right. So I thought a network was a good place to talk about networking, isn't it? <laughs> For our second event. Um, so what we'll talk about today. Additional networks, apart from this one, that you can join that can sort of connect you to other people in the field. So groups and other organizations and conferences, trainings, events you can attend online and offline. Simple steps to take on social media. I should probably have another separate session about social media and, you know, creating um, a presence on social media, but I'll, I'll cover it slightly on this on this call. Okay, and then let's see what else. Big names to follow in the field. And just a little bit about networking skills themselves. Like once we're in those conversations, how can we make them have a lasting impact and create a you know long lasting um, connection? So it's an open discussion. Every single event of this network will be slightly different. So last time we had some, you know, discussion. We had some breakout rooms. I had some slides. This time it's an open forum. So I'm just going to share what I know. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it could be possible that you know these things already, or it could be possible that you know some that I don't know. So then I'm going to ask everybody, okay, share the other networks that you know about or the other organizations that you know about. So that's basically how it'll go. I'll share my two cents. And I will also give you some time to browse the sites, okay? As we do in our training sessions, right? We like to make people have good experiences and practice in the moment. Same thing here. You can take a minute, you know, open another window, go to the site, sign up right now, just so that, you know, you, you do it right in the moment. Because I know if, if you're anything like me, I will say, oh, yeah, I'll sign up later. I'll... I'll join later. No, and it never happens or I lose the information or something happens that I don't do it. So I'm going to give you a little bit of time after each you know, slide that you can actually, like I'll put the links into the chat window and you can actually go and click on those links if you want right here in the session. All right, so we can consider it sort of like a hands-on workshop. And the session is recorded like I already mentioned. And I will also put all the, the links that I mentioned today and the links mentioned in the chat 
into the network. So like last time, there were a couple of resources that came up that people mentioned in the chat or they were in my slides. So I took those and I put them, you know, I pasted it under as a message on the last event um, block. So I'll do the same with this session as well. So you can have all the, don't worry if like, you know, you missed one thing like, oh, I didn't get that link. Don't worry. I'm going to make sure that you get all the information in one way or another afterwards. Okay. All right. So some other networks. Okay. If you don't know already, CITAR, probably you know CITAR already. Um, also, <clears throat> CITAR has some individual country chapters. So for example, we have CITAR Italy, and I know there's CITAR Austria. So, you know, check in your country, wherever you're you're based and see if there's a, you know, your own uh, country's chapter. Then there's this weekly culture chat of the Interchange Institute. Maybe you know about this already. They're doing something similar to what I'm doing. What I realized, I kind of realized too late that sometimes the times of my events also conflict with theirs. So I'm going to try to avoid that in the future. I think they had an event today as well. Um, so I'm going to try to put them on different days so we don't clash. Um, this is a really nice network. Um, I went to a couple of their events. I thought it was really nice. There were a lot of people. Uh, the organizers are super nice, very professional. And the speakers, like one time last year, I went to an event where they had people that are running their own companies in the cross-cultural field. So I thought that was really useful. I got connected to some people that were you know, doing a great job in the field. So there's that culture chat you can sign up for. And then they also have a network, which I just discovered today called the Interculturalist Circle. So let me see if I can get out of this presentation mode and copy these links right there into the chat. Okay, so let me start the discussion then. Does anyone know of any others that are not mentioned here? All right, so I put those links from that into the chat window. Oh, by the way, I do have a picture of what this looks like on the Interchange Institute's website with some instructions if you go to membership and then you click there, there's a little drop down menu and you'll you'll get you'll see interculturalist um, circle. All right. So go ahead, Torben. Did you have your hand up? You had you know some networks. Yes, well, it's not really a network. I discovered it via the LinkedIn algorithm, kind of took me there. Okay. Um, this diversity. Oh yes. Thingy. So they they have like a casual bi-monthly or bi-week, no, bi yeah, bi-monthly, bi-monthly uh, um, virtual get-together and they play kind of like a game. So you have like these game yes. parts and uh, yeah, I found some nice connections there as well. So Good. I met Good especially you know. about India. I was educated about India there and I Good. discovered that the Indian culture is quite close to the... Uh, Middle Eastern culture and yeah, you meet some cool people there, so I can recommend that. So thanks some for sessions sharing are better that. than others, but uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's called this... diversify. I or diversify. yes, yes, diversify. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And it's on LinkedIn, no? So I think yes. they meet every every second or third Thursday or something. That's right. I think they they do meet. Yeah, every couple of weeks, and every time they yeah. meet, it's a different country that they the, yeah, and a different, and a different subject and a different, different country. Subject. Yeah, I sometimes they, they also teamwork. had team building, and yes. they also had team building, or they had dare to be different. Yeah, like you're daring, then you're kind of like pushing the envelope a little, so you're kind of right. uh, yeah, work with not really taboos, but yeah, close to taboos and. Something difficult, like this. So, difficult so, subjects. Yeah, quick, quick, difficult subjects. Yeah. Good, good to know. You know, I've I've seen those events being advertised and I have a Facebook group and they post in it every time. And every time I'm like, I'm, I want to go, I, I want, you know, I should go and attend one of these events. 
but I've never actually had a chance to attend. So I'm glad to hear that you thought it was useful. Yeah, I like the gaming concept, right? And then yeah, it's a gaming depending place. on the breakout room. So you're always in a breakout room with three or four people. Okay. And um, yeah, of course, they can be super cool or they can... Uh oh. It's, it's a nice way of talking about it through these game right. cards, right? It, so, it's yeah. right. Like, as you said, it's a good way to also see if you want to use it as a teaching tool, this game that they have. It, it could end up being a good teaching tool for you. So I guess that's that's a chance to discover if Diversify works or could be useful for your training. All right. Thanks a lot, Torben. So I see a couple of messages here world council of intercultural competence okay thanks nadia where is that located do you have a link by any chance the link is uh higher up in the chat so oh the sorry iccglobal.org oh that one okay the, uh, now yeah. i see it okay good thanks and there's an event coming up i think tomorrow so oh, good. it's like okay. a global global meeting so if you guys want to join <laughs> Could be oh, an opportunity. Right. Good to know. Good to know. ICC Global. Mm -hmm. All right. So then there is this cross cultural consultants network. I guess it's kind of similar to what we're doing here, but I mean, actually, they post when they're looking for certain culture specialists. Like you can see this screenshot here looking for Argentine culture specialists in Buenos Aires. And actually, I see lots of different requests, like for lots of different countries. So even though this is based, I think, in Mexico or somewhere in South or Central America, it's on that side of the world, um, they, they frequently look for trainers that are specialized in, in countries all over the world. So if you join that, you can write to this guy called Olivier, 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 at, and this is his email address, and he'll ask you to fill a form. And then he'll put a profile for you up there. And then you can, you know, also access all these different resources. And yeah, maybe it could be useful. All Cheryl, right. is, it, is it free to join this network? Yes, this is yeah. free. This is free. At least when I joined, it's been a couple of years, but it was free when I joined. So I assume it still is. Let me put that link also in the chat window. You can check it out and see if you think it could be useful. Okay, and I'll put the email address too. All right, so any others before we move on to groups? Okay, so the next slide is just a collection of some groups. There's There are actually many, but um, some groups on LinkedIn could be useful. Some are more active than others. So one of them is learning and development professionals. Okay, then there's diversity and cross-cultural professionals, cross-cultural management, ICDC, which I guess, this is an organization I'm not too familiar with. Does anyone know this organization personally? And then there's the Culture Change Network. All right, so there's those five. Those are the only five I put, but there's actually many more. If you go and Google, I mean, search within LinkedIn, uh, you can find many groups. If you just put in like culture, cross-cultural, intercultural, you know, different variations of the word and, you know, diversity also several groups come up. And let's see what else. Anything around learning and development. There's also several groups for relocation and global mobility. So that's another branch of cross-cultural training where our services can be useful. So you might want to check out and get connected to some relocation companies and some global people in global mobility. All right. Any other any others that you know of that are active and that have that have some value for you in LinkedIn? Feel free to put them in the chat window. 
And if you want, if you're connected to LinkedIn right now, you can go ahead and sign up for those groups. I think all you have to do is click on the link and then request to join and that's it. And uh, if you want, you can do that right now as we speak. Okay, any others to share here? Going once, going twice. All right, very good. So just to, as, as a side note, I mean, I, I'd like to hear your experience. I've, I've tried different, you know, platforms. Um, I tr like for my business, I tried Instagram, didn't work. Um, I got absolutely nowhere. Um, Facebook also doesn't really go anywhere. Um, I found that, you know, LinkedIn works, Twitter a little bit. Um, it's slow, but it, it works for some things, especially like I work with the Middle East. So um, most people in Saudi are connected on link on Twitter because that's the number one platform in Saudi Arabia, for example. So that's the only reason why Twitter goes well for me. Um, I don't really get any business from Twitter in other countries or from other clients outside Saudi. It's only Saudi. But um, yeah, so share your experience. I'd like to, to hear, you know, how you've had success with different social platforms. Like, has anyone tried others like Pinterest or, uh, you know, any others that you, that you have found to be, <laughs> to be useful? Or is it only LinkedIn, as I, as I imagine? <laughs> I'd be happy to talk about this. I'm also a professional in marketing. So oh, this is kind fantastic. Of on point for me. Thank you. Um, so I have a really weird experience because I kind of accidentally fell into cross-cultural uh, things, but also I started working for an intercultural company as a marketing person for them. Oh, okay. So I kind of saw both sides of things. Awesome. And um, for me personally, LinkedIn is great. Instagram is great, but the problem is you're not getting to your audience. You're technically talking to the rest of us. So I know Allison True. has the same problem sometimes because she and I are <laughs> on Instagram quite often together. But um, I do really recommend Pinterest for people who do want to have more of a long game. Um, people will consistently find your content over time. Doesn't mean that you are going to get something quickly. You might have someone down the road if you have very targeted content to find you. Um, Pinterest is something that not a lot of people think about when they're doing their strategies. Um, but if you put something, try to see if you could save it and reshare it on Pinterest, maybe down the road, if someone is able to find your content and you have a very good CTA, someone can click on your website, understand what you're doing, understand obviously what you're selling, they're more likely to come to you my personal opinion okay yeah. that's really good advice and i think we all need it and it would be really great to have a separate session on this if you'd ever be interested in you know um talking about it in more detail sorry i can't see your first name i only see your last name what is your first name tatiana tatiana okay now i finally connected it because that you joined recently inside and i think we messaged back and forth Oh, yeah. So great to, to finally see you almost in person. <laughs> All right. Very good. Nadia, please. Yeah, Tatiana, I wanted to ask you um, as a marketing professional, uh, what do you think of TikTok as platform? Do you think that for professionals in this field, it could be a platform today or in the nearest future? Oh, this is this is fun. I am not very well versed in TikTok myself. I haven't had a lot of time to play with it. Um, there's a stunning statistic that says people that were born after 2000 are using that more than Google for finding things, which is ridiculous. So I think if you really don't want to spend a lot of time, copy what you're already doing, especially something if you're doing something on Instagram, copy that and just reshare it on TikTok. Don't even think about it. Hmm. then you don't have to double what you're doing. Thanks. But do I would you say, though, I mean, I've, I've dipped, dipped my toe in TikTok. <laughs> and um, 
well, Cheryl, uh, you know this, and I think Tatiana knows this as well. So I also manage my husband. We, we have a the sim racing racing accounts, and it's interesting because I do a lot with that on TikTok, and I feel that I I will will do that right. I'll post on Instagram, and I will post on TikTok, and it's so striking what hits and what what sticks and what doesn't. Because what I post on Instagram might go up and get a lot of views and a lot of in- interactions, and I'm like, great, awesome. I'll put it on TikTok, and it like tanks. I'll put something on Instagram and it tanks. I put it on TikTok, it skyrockets. Why? It's just Amazing. different audiences. I am like, and I feel like in TikTok, captions are nil. You don't do captions. You just do hashtags. So you really have to, your, your videos, your TikToks have to be so on point and give that message in so quick and so short and so succinct that you can't have like, oh, read in the caption because like nobody reads captions. Like the, mm-hmm. the kids don't read the captions. I don't, the Gen Z doesn't read captions. So you have to, it's just so different. And I'm like, I'm, I'm like, okay, I really need to sit down and like figure out how I'm going to do TikTok. But yeah, it's, it's very interesting. So um, I don't know what that looks like for IC. I'll give you my results as I, as I keep playing around and just test and, and experiment. Thanks, Allison. Just, Sorry, just to quickly go off of Allison, I, I met someone recently who started the TikTok less than three months ago and already has 24,000 followers and her content is pretty pointless. Um, I love her to death, but it's just like super quick, super easy. It's something you could put together super simply and the things that are more complicated don't seem to yeah. work. So yeah. and Allison mm-hmm. makes fantastic content, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I, yeah, yeah, TikTok, I got to figure out how to make that. I got to almost, I don't want to say I want to dumb it down, right? Because I don't want to say that, but like you, you do it, it's an art form, right? So how do you take a very complex thing like intercultural communication and really make it snappy and quick and easy to digest? Maybe, yeah, like cultural tips and things that, as you said, are snappy and easy and mm-hmm. catchy. I mean, have you been using TikTok or when you're talking about your TikTok experience? Is it mainly with your other endeavor with your husband, the, the racing, or is it also, have you tried it also with cultural? Uh, both. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I struggle. Like now that I've seen a lot of stuff that I put up for, for intercultural communication, TikToks, like everything I've put up has been like, all right. Like I get like 600 views. Right. Mm. So it's funny. Yeah. But whereas his, because his content, the content's just a little bit different. Like, for example, we talked about like the sim racing, like the racing that is like all, a lot of kids do that. I say kids, it's, I mean, like Gen Z, a lot of kids, uh, they're on it. So that's why that seems to skyrocket and get like mm-hmm. so much engagement. It's trending. It's trending like crazy. Whereas like on Instagram, it's like, it's like kind of popular, but it's really, it's so niche. So it's like, whereas like there, when I do like more machining, like showing like him working in on the machines and stuff like that, for some reason, skyrocket because you get more folks who do that on Instagram. So it's just mm-hmm. about finding that audience and like targeting mm-hmm. so specifically. So okay. I think TikTok is just still so very new for this field. Right. I, you have to almost wonder what, who are you targeting? You have to really think who's my audience. Right. Like as Rita just put here in the chat window, I mean, if you get lots of clicks and likes and views, great, but do they transfer into clients? Do they turn over into clients? Yeah. I'm sorry. If I, if I can share my personal experience. Yes. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I feel the same way as Rita. I have lots of clicks and, and, and views and likes, but I don't think that it really aims at, at, at the customers or the people that I really want to aim at. So, um, me and my husband and I, we have this consultancy together and we are trying a new thing. We are implementing a newsletter and because we think that when you send email to people and after mm-hmm. uh, subscription or sometimes even more aggressively, like people that we randomly have on our some some emails lists, but they, I mean, the attention is full 
uh, on us, I mean, on the email. This, it doesn't compete with uh, something else. So, so far, uh, I, I couldn't say if it's going to work, but uh, we've tried like in other endeavors that we had in the past and it, it has shown some good results and positive results. So we're hoping the same for, for our consultancy company. Good luck. I'd like to hear how that goes after some time. Uh, your results, if you want to share it with us and, and maybe even teach us how you're doing it, that would be great. Um, maybe we can have a separate session where we talk only about social media and different ways of generating leads, like having your email newsletter and all those different things. Maybe we can have a separate session just about that. Sounds like you guys all have a lot of like a mix of experience with different ways of of generating clients and you know keeping in touch with people so that's fantastic all right so about conferences training events etc so there are so many um if you know the lewis company crossculture.com they have this train the trainers program in fact i think michael gates um put a, an event inside the network they they're having this train the trainer in january so this could be interesting if you want to get certified. Um, Hofstede Insights has a lot of courses. And I mean, they have short courses, like one day programs. And then they have like one week programs. They have a lot of different stuff on different topics, organizational culture, uh, you know, lots of different things. So you can click on what we do and then you'll see certification programs and open programs. Feel free to check that out now if you want. And then there's ICQ Global. So this is one of the up and coming, you know, training companies, train the trainer companies. Um, we have also Andy Malinsky. Maybe you know these names already. So please forgive me if I'm being redundant. But um, yeah, the Global Dexterity Certification Program is one. And then there's a number of books and, and other resources at this website. Then let's see, we have the Interchange Institute, which I already mentioned on the previous slide. They have a train the trainer program. Then let's see, we have, of course, CETAR. So CETAR has conferences. In addition to training, they have events, they have conferences. I went to the CETAR conference in Malta this year in May, and I thought it was a great experience. Um, actually, it's an interesting setup because it's kind of half academics, like people that are working in universities, they got their PhDs, they're doing research on culture and they're very intellectual academic people. And then the other side, like the other half were people like, like us, like working in the field in different ways or running their own business or consultancy or something. So it was about 50-50 of those types, at least from, from my own observations. Um, but I thought it was a great experience to get connected to a lot of people in the field in one short, you know, period. I think it was a three-day conference and um, it was in a beautiful place. I mean, Malta is amazing. And then I also picked up a lot of training techniques because, you know, all the sessions are taught by the actual members of CETAR. And I mean, some of them are more experienced than others, but I mean, every session had a good takeaway. Every session had something to learn about and um, and to utilize in the in the classroom. So has anyone been to other CETAR events? I know that Allison was at CETAR Malta. We met there. And um, is there anyone I'm missing? Rita, Rita was at CETAR Malta. And Maya was at CETAR Malta, yes. So do you want to share your experience and um, your opinion about the CETAR conference as compared to maybe other conferences that you'd been to in the cross-cultural space? Anyone? Hey, uh, I volunteered a sharing. <laughs> I will you, Rita. You go ahead. Um, I think CETAR is trying to be on a meta level to the entire industry, while many other conferences are very 
uh, guru specific, if I may say so. <laughs> um, while we are trying to share all the academic insights and knowledge and, and study results in CATAR, especially when I look at this last page you just put up about the cultural companies, yes, of course they do events as well, but mostly to promote their particular methodology. That's and right. I come from the cultural detective methodology. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, there are many ways to present a company at conferences and CATAR tries to gather us all, right? Um, I was wondering though, if what we're doing here today might just be a little bit... Um, I'm not sure what we're doing actually. Are we doing marketing? Are we doing <laughs> just sharing, connecting? What are we really aiming at? Uh, please help me. I'm, I can, I haven't figured it I out. I mean, so we're just aiming at looking at different sort of windows through which we can meet people and learn more in the field. So, I mean, I'm like I'm not connected to any of these companies particularly. Although, yeah, I did the Lewis Model program, but I'm kind of just mentioning all of them so that in case anyone finds it useful they can check it out they can join so yeah it's true what you say about how these companies on the previous slide and all on this slide too they all have their own methodologies that they want to promote right they train you in their methodology they train you in their program and they want to spread their materials they want you to buy their material they want you to market their materials to people and I agree. I mean, I also came from Cultural Detective, which doesn't exist anymore. They closed. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, in the end, it's like they're just different methods. I think it's important as trainers to get uh, some, let's say, to have some exposure to lots of different methodologies so that when you you have a request for a training, any any request, you can sort of look at you know, the, the big picture and then pick and choose the right exercises and the right material that suits the client and the situation that you need to be training in. So I'm not like in favor of any of these. If I'm putting them up on the slide, it's only to just sort of educate anybody who's new to the field. For example, there's a lot of people that join the network that are kind of new and maybe don't have a certification yet not that you have to have one i mean you you also can become a trainer without having any certification it doesn't mean you have to have a certification but if you want to these are the options that's that's basically i mean the only goal is to figure out how we can get connected to more people in the field in, in different ways so the last one i think the last so i hope i answered your question rita All good. Okay. All right. I hope that you'll find the information here useful. I mean, I mean, apart from this slide, which maybe you know all these organizations already, there's some other information that's coming that hopefully will be useful. All right. So yeah, then there's also the CQ, which I always get confused between. I mean, ICQ and cultural intelligence are different, right? Somebody please clarify this because I keep mixing up these two companies. Oh, two different... ICQ is a Hungarian guy living in England, and he yes. has a, such a cool thing off of Hofstede material. Yes, Kashaba, and... Kashaba Top, right? Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And but the Cultural Intelligence Center is completely new to me. What's that all about? Uh, that's a. I think that's based in the U.S. Um, personally, you know, I've checked out their courses, and they're super expensive. Like. It's again, another one of those companies that wants to sell you their methodology and they want to create more disciples of their programs. And for some reason, a four hour certification co course costs $2,495, which is just, yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. I don't want to say anything negative about any of these companies, anything negative or positive about any of the companies. It's, it's, I'm completely neutral. I mean, if any of you have done this, maybe you found it very useful. Maybe you you liked their uh, certification. So I don't want to say anything negative about it. I just want to mention that it's really expensive. It's not nearly as expensive to do other certifications. 
All right. So, oh, and there's one more. Go ahead. Who wanted to say something? Was that you, Allison? Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, should, I guess I should raise my hand. Maybe that's all right. Sense. That's okay. So I, I did the um I did the young Ciatar training of the trainer. Oh, okay. Um, I know Cheryl. Oh, I think we had talked about yes where I was going. Yeah. Young Ciatar, I, same thing. Right. I was, you know, on the fence, like, should I get trained? And then I saw that there are so many of these different companies that do it, and there's all various different price ranges, and what do you get for it? And I don't know. I'm confused. There's too many. Right. You know, I'm I'm just starting out. I don't have my own business yet. So you're just like, okay, like obviously I can't drop like 10 G's on like all this training, and then like what's gonna what am I what's gonna come of it? You know, and then what should I do? You know, so I did the young Ciatar one because I a I mean not to say like oh I'm cheap, but I was like, well, it really was very very cost friendly um and yes I did get a chance to go to like Luxembourg where the training was taking awesome. place so that was really cool um and I think it it was I mean I'm not going to knock Young Ciatar but it was the the planning and coordination was very sketch um everything was very like last minute okay. in terms of like oh they gave you the dates and where it was going to take place and like that was it in terms of like where you were staying what was going to happen was all very like you didn't find out till like maybe a week before it actually kicked off and it was oh like, my oh, I don't know what this is going to be. Is this going to be like a scam? Like, I don't know what this is, but it all ended up being great in the end. Um, the training was really great. Um, everyone, you had all different levels and different people from different backgrounds, folks. who I'd never seen before in any other settings um, or like culture chat or like Ciatar or anything like that. So I, I thought it was just phenomenal. I, okay. I would highly recommend it. It's great I, to know. I don't know. It's funny. The, I, I heard Young Ciatar is actually kind of like kind of not, not a black sheep, but the way they had said that like it, it came about was very uh I don't know, like it's not considered like as like prestigious as Ciatar, but I, I don't know. I, I thought it was really I thought the folks that were really well educated and and okay. well spoken. Um good to so know. Good to know. I would recommend it. All right. Thanks, Allison. And let me just address a couple of the comments here. Um, so Harriet asked a very good question. If you're starting out, how do you gain credibility when you lack the experience? Okay, so I think it's a process. And um, yeah, I mean, this is one way is to like, start doing courses. And sooner or later, you're gonna fall upon some opportunities. And then the more you do it, the more experience you gain. Um, yeah, so I think that if you're starting out, getting a certification of some sort does add a little credibility just because you can say, okay, I'm certified in this methodology. So then people, you know, it, it gives a little bit of credibility to your name. And also at the trainings themselves, like at the train, the trainer sessions, you get connected to a lot of people. So for example, when I did the Lewis one, I got connected to a couple of people that had their own cross-cultural companies and they still hire me once in a while for, for gigs. And the same with cultural detective. Like I met a lot of people that are in my network. So I think it's, it's not like there's no one like easy answer to this, but I think it's a, it's a continual process. And once you like start doing it, you, you can also, this is probably maybe a, a topic for another session. I have another career related session where I talk about this specifically, like how to, how to start, like how to get your name out there. And one way is offering free sessions at local organizations or, um, you know, doing some, some lead mining and, and doing some cold approaches to companies and offering them a free session from which they could potentially hire you for additional paid sessions. And once you have like a three or four clients, you'll find that people start to pass the word around. They start to, you know, spread the word. Oh, we had this trainer. She was really good. So why don't you, you know, you can call her. So it's, it's a really, you know, and this is why I'm doing this kind of networking event with, with you guys, because the more we get connected, the more we can help each other. So for example, um, people people write to me all the time when they want to know something about the Middle East, and I'm always happy to help them. I even give free sessions just just for that, just for no reason, just other than to help people that want to learn about the Middle East because they're going to run a training. They've been asked to run a training about the Middle East, and they don't have 
maybe particular experience of living there. Now, there may come a day when I also need to do a training about a certain area of the world that I haven't lived in or I don't have much experience with. And so being connected to people like us can, can help, you know, we can all help each other at times. I mean, I know that there are trainers, there are people that I know in the field that sometimes I call them when I'm in a, in a, in a crisis, like, I've been asked to deliver this training next week. I don't have time to design the material. Do you know any content designers, like course content designers? Oh yeah, I know one. I mean, you know, so there's resources that we can share between us. And um, so let me just look at these other. Yeah, okay. I'm just reading Ulysses' comment. Agreed, you should also find it. Yes, right. That's really true. Find the methodology that resonates with you. And, you know, what starts to happen as you, as time goes on, like you, if you get one certification, then you, you have one methodology under your tool bucket. And then maybe the more you, the more you do it, the more you move on and the more you, you learn and read, you start to develop your own materials. Like you start to come up with your own ideas for how to present certain topics. And I think those like self-invented materials are often the best I mean, maybe better than any of these methodologies out there, you know, and experience. Yeah, I'm just reading Aftad's comment. Experience makes um, makes a big difference as well. Like if you have experience working in a multinational or you have experience living in another country, you can draw on all those, even if you don't live in a, in a different country, but you work with people from different cultures, you probably have lots of experiences in your own you know, your own life experience that you can draw on and create role plays out of and create lessons out of and deduce lots and lots of important information that you can then pass on to people. And then it's all about developing skills as a trainer to, to make people, you know, come to their own conclusions inside the sessions, you know, it's all about giving them interesting questions, uh, stimulating group activities, things that get them to, you know, discuss and, and come to the own, their own conclusions on their own. Cause we as trainers should be merely facilitators. Like we are not there to like feed information to people and, and they just listen, unless we're giving a lecture. That's a different story. If you're a lecturer in a university, by all means, this is what lecturers do. They lecture, but trainers normally are in charge of an interactive learning experience, right? So it's kind of like we, we, we give certain prompts that generate discussions and, and then people come up with their own conclusions and they say, they, you know, they, they jump up out of their seats and say, oh yeah, that, that's why that situation happened when I was working in that country or, you know, they, they come to these kind of d discoveries on their own. Any comments about that, anyone? No, I just want to say that was right on point, and it's very important to to bear that in mind that we are facilitators, and yeah. and we should, uh, I mean, guide or help or or um, create the the necessary opportunities for people to to come up with their own conclusions and their own discoveries, and yep. True. Absolutely. Thanks, Ulysses. Maybe this is a, a good topic for another session. How we can do that in the classroom, how we can, you know, take certain prompts to, to yeah, to stimulate good productive thought and uh, group work. All right. So the last one here, last but not least, BBI communication. So if you go and click on news and events, you can find some free events, some paid ones to some in person, some online. Maya, would you like to say any words about BBI? Hi, yeah, I'm surprised you added it to your list, Cheryl. Thank you. You're <laughs> That's most nice. welcome. Yeah, so we, we do run uh, some free webinars and 
events, um, mainly for our clients, because we're, you know, just like anybody else trying to get business. Uh, but we do run some free stuff as well, especially during the month of May, which is the diversity month and the EU oh, okay. diversity month. Uh, we actually did uh, a session, a free session for all last May, where we played uh, Diversify. Uh, oh, there, uh, because they have a million different games, a million different themes, uh, country specific and topic specific. Uh, we played the one called Cross Cultural Competence, oh. uh, which was really good. Um, and uh, what we also do, though, is uh, we do run our uh, internal intercultural trainer network for the people who have uh, at some point regularly or one off collaborated with us. So if uh, if I have the chance to work with you guys, when I have the chance to work with you guys, then uh, there will also be that support that we have for our trainers. Okay. Um, but obviously we have to find opportunities to, to work together first. Um, so that's why I was also really keen to and, and happy to see Cheryl that you're doing this because this is open to all uh, and without an agenda, right? Without right. pushing anything. And I love that because there's so many of these uh, associations that are pushing their own methods, selling their own stuff. Uh, and I believe in, in really the inclusivity of methods too, right? That right. I don't think that one thing, whether it's Louis or Hofstede or Erin Meyer, I don't think that one method uh, suits all situations. You need to combine them. You need to choose what works for you and what works in that specific situation. So I really, um, I really appreciate what you've launched here for us because it's really, really useful. Uh, and uh, but do I mean I, I agree with Cheryl? Follow us on LinkedIn because you will be uh, kept up to date when there are events going on. Better follow us on LinkedIn rather than the website because LinkedIn is where it's all happening and that's my um, input also to that conversation okay. earlier Good. we're only on on LinkedIn you know okay. our marketing manager she will she will post some stuff on the website but really that's a, a, almost like a dead body of text right? <laughs> the the interaction is really happening on LinkedIn and the the the, the, the things that come alive is there uh, we don't use anything apart from LinkedIn it's really okay there. yeah good to know thanks yeah. a lot Maya thanks yeah. for that information and it's sure. my pleasure to include you because <laughs> yes. I know you're doing some really nice events I checked out several of your events if I didn't attend it was just because I had something else going on but I was like hey that looks that looks great like some of those Saturday morning long uh, seminars Ulysses hi Ed. um I wanted to to share with you that um although I don't I don't have a formal certification yet. I mean, I've been looking into some of the other companies that are offering certifications and and reports and stuff like that. And some of them I found very, very similar, but I've come to the conclusion that what really matters is to, I mean, know what to do with those reports. I mean, you, you might get like the most beautiful and complete reports, but really debriefing those reports with with your client and and identifying the gap I and mean, where they are and where they want to be. And then, you know, develop or co-create an action plan with them to to get them there. I mean, that's that's where we come into into, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, into game. And and that's that's our our value, I think, in all, in all this. Okay, good. So you're referring to the profiling that you get from these psychometric tools, right? And then breaking down the report and, and showing how it can be useful yeah. for the companies. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Right. We had some conversations inside the, the network about IDI and the Aaron Meyer tool. So did you end up choosing one yet, Ulysses? Um, not yet, but I I really like so far the IDI. I I've I've been I had the chance to take that assessment um, last year when I was a principal at a school, and um, and I really I really liked it. I liked the uh, the report. I liked the information. I liked the 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 framework they developed, and it was pretty neat and. 
And I also like the other ones. And I'm having some conversations with, with people from other companies. Some of the ones uh, you guys suggested on, uh, on the app. So I haven't taken a decision yet, but I so far I like the IDI. Okay, good. <laughs> so for anyone who's not familiar with IDI, it's Intercultural Development Index. Is that what it stands for? Inventory. In inventory, right. Inventory. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a psychometric test and there's a profile that comes out just like uh, Lewis model has one. It's called Culture Active. Uh, Aaron Meyer has one. It's called the Aaron Meyer Team Mapping Tool. Um, let's see what other, there's also the um, intercultural conflict, ICS, intercultural conflict styles. That's another uh, test where, you know, it it's basically puts people in one of four quadrants and you can use it for, you know, as a, as a basis for um, teaching about conflict, how to resolve conflict. People understand what kind of conflict resolver they are what, what they do in conflict do they avoid do they face it do they you know what is their conflict style and then there's a whole set of exercises around that so that's also another good topic for a separate sessions a separate session and i'm reading these comments okay rita hr departments have con oops it just went up now i can't see it hr departments have contracts with these institutions and then hire trainers who can work around the psychometrics right it's really a corporate thing. It's really, yeah, it, it lives in the HR space um, in many cases. IVI. Okay, what is that one, Maya? V, what is the... Sorry for being so mysterious, just writing no. it like that. It's the um, it, it's the sort of IDI 2.0 almost, maybe, oh. uh, where Bennett and David Trickley uh, have developed uh, something they refer to as the intercultural viability oh. Uh, in indicator, am I saying that right? So um, it's basically using the um, the idea behind the you know the IDC uh, and adding a sort of level of complexity to it about the the organization's sort of structural limits in mm -hmm. intercultural competence. So they're saying that an organization's intercultural competence is not the sum of its individuals' IDI results. It mm -hmm. is more than that because. Um, obviously an organization would hinder or allow the, the individuals to showcase their intercultural competence by having certain structures or inclusivity or not. So it's, um, it's a really complex tool though. I've never used it and they've launched it just earlier this year. Okay, uh, good But to it's know. worth keeping an eye on, yeah, to see Definitely. how it develops. Maybe this is gonna be one of the, the newest, most popular Who tools. Knows? Good. Thanks. Thanks for mentioning it. I haven't heard of it. So that's good. All right, Tanya. Hi, hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to mention that I agree with, you know, all these ideas about how we as trainers go about, um, you know, stylizing and customizing. And I just wanted to offer um, my availability to anyone who has questions about all of these different tools that we're talking about, because I've been through most of them that you've mentioned here, um, just in my own work, trying to decide mm -hmm. what's appropriate, what engagement and what client and what, and they're all very different. And I like yes. you said about, you know, I think it, the important thing to remember is that each of these tools has a purpose, but they're not, they're not a one size fits all for every engagement. And so sure. it becomes difficult sometimes to figure out which one is best for this program. So I've done a lot of that and I, I am certified in some of them, although I've chosen to not be certified in others, I am not impartial. <laughs> and I definitely think there's pros and cons to each. So just putting myself out there, if someone has more questions about That's that. That's really good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, Tanya. And maybe in, we can have a future session on them if you'd like to share your experience. Because me too, I, I've kind of been through all of them at one point or another. Globe Smart is another one that I discovered years back when I worked in Microsoft India, and then I got certified in it recently only because I thought that maybe corporates would like it, but I, I haven't done anything with it. I, I think I used it in one training situation, but um, yeah. So then I found Aaron Meyer's tool, which kind of looks like an expansion of GlobeSmart. It looks like it's very similar. I think some of the factors are, are also similar, but she's put additional ones 
And yeah, I'm curious about like your experience using them in different training situations, because I find that sometimes, um, yeah, as you said, there's no one size fits all They're for different purposes. IDI, if I'm not mistaken, is used as a kind of, it's used in the recruiting process, actually, like to see how people, how potentially culturally flexible people could be. I don't know. This was my experience. It was part of my interview process for Microsoft India. They wanted to see if I could adapt to living and working there. And yeah, I think that I think the recruiting rules in India are quite a bit different than those in the U.S. because they I am certified in the IDI and they specifically tell you you are not allowed to use it in that form in the States. That if oh. you have someone who wants to use it as an interview process and they need to work with the company on that because of the legal requirements. Mm -hmm. um, but I, like you, have certainly given input. Um, I've done about 100 assessments so far this year on uh, but outside of the US for cultural competence in terms of interviewing and assessing. Okay, good to know. All right, so we'll save that. We'll, we'll just park that topic temporarily and we'll get back to it on, at a later date. Very good. All right, so just some related fields to keep in mind that besides these cross-cultural companies, there are fields that are connected with cultural I mean, intercultural training because they use intercultural trainers. Like one of them is relocation and global mobility. So this is one big opportunity to get connected with people who are moving staff from place to place on a regular basis. They're working with these relocation companies and relocation companies hire trainers. So this could be an opportunity to network and you know get connected with some, some possible gigs. There's also the ARP, Association of Relocation Professionals. Um, by the way, Eura is having a conference in Dublin, I think in April. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to attend that. Um, Centuro Global. This is now, this is just a personal thing. I love this organization because these guys have excellent content, first of all. It's really good to see their content. They're, they're fantastic at the whole digital marketing thing. Secondly, they're a kind of international network, not exactly related to cross-cultural, but they're, they're dealing with people that have um, different roles in the relocation space, like visa and immigration agents, um, you name it, everything from global mobility to relocation companies. And then, you know, people working with visas and immigration to lawyers like international immigration lawyers. And so th through them, I actually got a couple of gigs because sometimes they get asked about cross-cultural training. And since they don't specifically deal with cross-cultural, sometimes they call me and I've got a couple of gigs from them. So it's a good thing to follow them. They're really nice people as well. And there's also this forum for expatriate management. So the whole expat movement field is a place that we can, you know, get into to build our network and maybe find some gigs. So there's this forum, there's net expat, there's actually many more organizations. I just put a small sampling here because what happens is if you get connected to these and you follow them on LinkedIn and you sign up for their newsletter, then, you know, the analytics and the whole you know, the AI of the world <laughs> and all the platforms are going to start sending you other things related. So that's, that's how it works nowadays. Once you get, you know, connected, then you start to see more, like you naturally start to see more because it shows up in your, in your newsfeed. So Tanya, did you have your hand up again, or was that from before? That's from before. Sorry. Oh, okay. No problem. No problem. Um, yeah, so this is just a selection. I mean, it's just a, a sampling. There's actually many more. So I encourage you to get out there and look, search for global mobility, relocation, expat. There's so many things that are going on out there. Um, anyone want to share about conferences, either from the previous slide or this slide, anything that you would like to share about related fields that we can get connected to people and possibly get more gigs? <laughs> Anyone? If not, I'll move on, but feel free if something comes up. All right. Oh, by the way, I forgot to post those into the chat window. So let me just 
copy paste those now in case you want to look any of them up as we're speaking. So there you go. Why do you do that? Um, so I would, you know, I would also add the the point or I would ask also you guys who work as, uh, you know, intercultural trainers and freelance and your own businesses, you know, how to do the networking with the hopes of getting a direct a client and also the networking with hopes of getting work through someone like us, for example, who are, uh, would be, you know, a, a pro, a, you would be a provider to, uh, through us to a client. So maybe the networking would be different there, right? Sure. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, how much of your work is directly with clients and how much is through company companies like, like ours or companies like uh, relocation companies. Uh, mm -hmm. And I suppose the networking would be a little bit different than uh, depending on who you're trying to reach and who you're trying to be visible for. This is a really good question. And I'm so glad you brought this up. I think maybe we can also have a separate session for this where we can talk about how we actually promote ourselves. And uh, just just really briefly, because I have more material and we've already, we've already uh, reached six o'clock somehow. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, I can tell you that it's a it's a mix like I have some direct clients that just saw me somewhere they found me maybe they found my website or found LinkedIn profile and they contacted me and said okay we have this training need we're sending this person to Saudi Arabia can you help us um, so some of them are like direct and then others are through training companies like like BVI I mean there's a couple of companies there's a company in Germany I work through that is a cross-cultural training company, but they work, I think, mainly with just two German companies that are constantly sending people around. And I think they have just those two clients, as far as I know, maybe three. Um, and then, yeah, once in a while, I get contacted by a relocation company like Dwellworks, or um, what's that other one that's really big, LearnLight, these, these lang language companies, not, not only cross-cultural, but these language instruction companies. Um, so, oh, it's just, I'm looking at the chat window. You want this, the links from the previous slide. Okay, sorry about that. I will paste those right now. Just just want to add quickly, um, Cheryl. Sure, go for it. You talk about the language, uh, language learning uh, yes. centers or, or yes. companies. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty new to this space. Um, and so, previous experience, global experience in learning and development and and, and, and in corporate environments, but um, quite new. And so mm -hmm. I was sort of like, wow, uh, where do I start? Um, mm -hmm. In terms of the credibility element that came in, I'm based in Paris or France, whereby credibility is very important, having all the mm -hmm. certificates and everything. So that's, that's a um a, a barrier a slight barrier so that the need for a certification is quite important um also the french in terms of and i go back to the language learning their english learning is quite specific their needs their concerns their blockages are very very unique to to france that may not apply to other countries even in europe um but i i found a partnership through a language learning company called ilc france Oh. which I was linked through IH London and I did a, a, a business cultural training, uh, train the trainer course. Mm -hmm. I was connected with them in at this language learning company. So the idea is instead of, you know, um, going against the, the, the tide or, or, or the current, so to speak, I would partner with them. They need uh, help in, in their own way. And so it would be a mutual exchange. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how I've gone about getting into the space a bit more, getting okay. the mutual connections uh, in France uh, as a starting good. point. Thank you for sharing that, Harriet. It's a really good point that you can look locally and you can look for other avenues. And this is one really good avenue, language training, because language and culture go hand in hand. I mean, language is an element of culture. And so in a lot of the same or similar situations or companies that are offering language training would also benefit from, from cultural. I mean, cultural, it, it, it's very enigmatic, isn't it? Like how to find opportunities. It's, it's a little bit, it's still very niche. And, um, you know, sometimes 
like many of you have said to me that you've fallen into the career. Me too. I fell into it. I never knew it existed until I worked at Microsoft India and they, you know, they were doing all these tests on us, IDC and ICS and Globe Smart. And, and then I, you know, then I discovered and Strengths Finder, which is now called Gallup Strengths, but back then it was called Strengths Finder. Anyway, so I got sort of pushed into, not pushed, but maybe gently uh, urged into this field. And I think a lot of us have, who have taught language also have had a similar experience, but not only, I mean, also working in the international companies like Aftab, Aftab, are you still there? Aftab has worked yeah, in- Yes, I'm there. Yeah, so you, you became interested because you worked in a country that's not your own. I mean, you were working in Saudi when we met, right? And maybe you've had other, and Canada, you also, you're, are you in Canada now? No, I was there. No, I, I live in Canada, but work in Saudi and born oh, in right. India. Right. Okay, good. So you have like this three country uh, experience. And, and yeah, so I think also experiences like that maybe kind of push us into more training. Um, I mean, more opportunities and more avenues open up. Somebody had their hand up. Was that Ta uh, Tolbin? Torben, sorry. <laughs> yeah, hello. Um, no, I was just going to say, I was in, I think, the end of September, I was invited to give uh, a speech at a, at a panel discussion in, uh, for a big German insurance provider. And mm -hmm. um, they're actually thinking about making um, a whole summit around intercultural oh, communications, wow. right? Great. So that's also what I think that there's a trend towards actually naming it that way because he was interested in the idea because he said, does anyone does do that? Any big company, do they mm -hmm. do that? Then he said, no. Oh yeah, then we have to talk again. I mean, now it's very busy season, right? Mm -hmm. They have all their summits everywhere. So it's quite busy. And um, yeah, so I think that, that that's definitely an opportunity to look for as well. And then of course, getting uh, close to the HR department, right? right. So I think, HR. I think that's, that's, that's probably a thing that they do because they have their budgets, right? So, and if they trust you, if they think, oh, cool, maybe you can add value to that. We normally have a train the trainer for, we've been doing that for 10 years with that guy. Maybe it's time for a change, right? So, so that Good could points. be a thing, right? So, so yeah. I would also tie that a bit to team building. Right. So, yes, so not only building, not, right. not only to to that because I was asked to um to talk about intercultural teams and team building there. So I think uh you should always kind of try to combine it also with a coaching aspect, right? So, so I wouldn't just limit it to like a training. True, true. Right. So, so, uh, so that's why I, I mm -hmm. say and, and also even a training, I always say it's a cool thing. Right. That's why I, I name the things that I do always like a co thing, right? Because it's always like a corporation. It's like a co training right. or co coaching. True. Right. Because it's not really like a training because we we don't know. Right. We're just there to give the impulse. Facilitate. We're basically there to provide a trampoline. That's right. right? And the nice and 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 to ensure that there are not no bad pulls around. Right. So so maybe to cushion it a bit. Right. But we just Good. want to entice them to freely basically jump up and down and then maybe have this experience of two people jumping down and then one lifting the other and going, oh, wow. Right. Right. So, so to create these uh, facilities and to create these moments, I guess it's all about these moments. Right. Because, in fact, we don't know because everything's fluid. Everything's True. frequencies, right? So that's you right. Don't, you don't really like when you teach a language that's different, right? I also teach business English. Um, and I take it like an outsider approach. I, I'm originally business, um, I studied international business, so I always go into industries where I have like no knowledge of, and then I try to find my own system around it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how Good. I operate. I worked in a lot that's of great. things. That's so, great, um, Torben. So that's I think a point that you should we should all consider into pushing that into the HR men's or women's heads that maybe yes. they should combine that with like a team building thing. So that True. I think would be a thing. And it maybe, goes hand in hand. Yeah, and maybe even pushing the idea of a summit if you are like close to a CEO or to someone who can decide things, right? So to really push this thing as a summit because I really see this mm -hmm. as like the new sustainability thing. 
right? Like what's the green of 10 years ago will be the DA, uh, DAI of tomorrow, right? So that's, that's really true. what I believe in, right? Because there's so much interconnectedness. So that's, yeah, but that's, I, that's I always really talk true. too much. No, yeah, no, it's okay, Torben. It's always yeah, great yeah. to hear sorry, from you. Sorry, sorry to steal no, your no. time. Yeah. I, would, I would love to yeah. put, put you on the yeah. spotlight and let you have yeah. your own session one day yeah. because it's really great to hear all of your like really varied experience and approach of, of different things. And also that comment you made in the inside the network about not using models. I want to follow up with you on that soon. Yeah, like I've never used <laughs> one, right? So I've always come up with my own things and own. always make it like... Uh, specific right so basically you just have to find one person that believes in you yeah and then when you do a great job then it's like a ripple effect right like right. like you throw a, a stone in a in a pond right so right. then it goes boot, right you just need to be very good at what you do right so exactly. or you need to make an impact yes. right so make I think an that's, impact that's then... that's important right like one aha thing which you've never thought of which you thought like that's not really great but he thinks it's like boo <laughs> and then you go like okay and then it leads like to it. other opportunities right yeah, yeah great, great so on the next slide i have some big names to follow all right and torben i put you here because your content is awesome so i hope you don't mind thank but, you no and... problem no problem no no <laughs> i just share yeah, whatever's on my mind whatever i'm exposed to right so, so it's like quite varied right so yeah it's just it's yeah. fantastic and you're yeah. very active so yeah, some of these true. people, you, you'll you'll recognize some of the names like Andy Malinsky, Richard Lewis, Michael Gates, David Liver, Livermore. I don't even know if I pronounce it right. Um, anyway, a lot of these people, George Simons, Joseph, these are they're famous in the field. They've written books or they have their own like training program or something. So I copied and pasted the list in the chat window. Just follow all of them on LinkedIn, get their, you know, see their posts, comment on them, like them, and then you know, the more you do that, the more you'll get connected to to big names in the field. And Take then, the for the knighthood. <laughs> <you're>, <laughs> Thank you. You're you're most welcome. I'm always shy about this, so don't worry. <laughs> no, you're most. I'm welcome. just a regular guy, right? So don't worry. <laughs> Me too. I'm nobody special. Just yeah. So all right, big names to follow in terms of personal branding. Okay, if you're interested in building your brand as a person, as a you know cultural trainer, and you want to get more visibility online. These people talk about how to build your network, how to put good content, how to how to generate an audience. They're not cross cultural at all. They're not connected to cross cultural. I mean, you know Gary Vaynerchuk. He's this famous uh, this branding guru, and these other three are just really successful individual personal branding experts. They have some, you know, they have each like their own little space. I think they sell courses and stuff. But um, you can also get a lot of, you know, good and free information from them about building your network. Okay, so that's that. Let me just, did I paste those in the chat window? No, right? Not yet. Um, let me just put those there. Anyone else have any to share for either topic? Just put it right in the chat window. That'll be great. Then just about networking real quick, like I was saying, probably we need a separate session for this also because we've gone over the time. But if you're okay to stay, I have 10 more minutes. I can I can finish up. If you can, please stay. If not, we'll see you next time. So tips for networking online, follow the big names, like their posts, comment on them, post daily yourself on LinkedIn, original content. Examples could be comment on a cross-cultural article, training tip or technique, any other learning that you want to share, anything that you're reading about, even if it's not necessarily directly connected with cross-cultural, like I read lots of books about, I don't know, leadership, uh, conflict, um, you know, team building. And sometimes, you know, those things are all related. So why not share, share those tips, ask a question, start a poll, um, make a cross-cultural analysis of a news issue. Like you read the news, you find, oh, that's strange. Like, Joe Biden making those comments about Saudis. Um, you know, I had like a lot of opinions about that. Unfortunately, I didn't have a time to write the article, but I should have because it's always good to like write something about a trending topic, something that people are searching on and looking at. Um, you can do a cross-cultural book review or, you know, put some information from a book that you read recently or even didn't read recently, but just revisit and think it's useful. All right. When people comment on your post, reply as fast as possible. 
insert the hashtags, but not too many, because I've heard that if you put too many hashtags, LinkedIn will blacklist you. I, don't, I think up to 10 is okay. Um, if you need content ideas, what I well, suggest- I heard six. I heard six. Six? You should okay. always limit it to six, and six. you shouldn't right. also tag a lot of people. Oh, That's yes. what I did on my last Good post. Point. I tagged quite a bit of people. And then they kind of even deactivate it and put down your oh, your algorithm. Good so to know. don't take right. a lot of people. Just tag people that you normally um, comment back and forth as well. Then they would recognize that someone real. Okay. Right? So that, that, good, that's what good. people Thanks, told me. Thanks, right? Up to six hashtags and yes, not tag too many people. All right. If you need content ideas, sometimes people say, I don't know what to write about. I don't know what to post about. First thing, consume content. If you consume other people's content, you start to get ideas for your own content, right? So consuming content doesn't mean just reading the LinkedIn newsfeed, but like, for example, I have this app called Blinkist. If you, does anyone know Blinkist? It's a wonderful app. You can read book or read or listen to book summaries. And from that, I get a lot of ideas. Um, also YouTube with videos, um, different training methodologies and books that I have um, just you know you can get content and content ideas in many different ways my suggestion when you have the idea capture them because what happens you get an idea on the fly you're in the shower and you get a big idea a great idea for a content for a post or an article or something or you're driving down the street and you flash you get an idea well find a way to capture those ideas somewhere so that later you can convert them into posts so I normally use uh, Microsoft OneNote, but you know you can use anything. You could use a voice recorder. You could use uh, any other app that you that you like to capture information. You can use the Notes app inside of your iPhone, but just write them down somewhere and get in a habit of you know writing them down. Um, you can use a program to organize your ideas. Like I use Asana, and then I post. I schedule the content with a program called Later. It's free. Um, and if you really find it hard to manage all this stuff, because it, it can be a full-time job, honestly, managing all the social media, you can hire a virtual assistant. I have three virtual assistants that help me with different things. And I have one who does my Twitter. He sends me a spreadsheet once a week, and he's put all the tweets. There's two tweets a day. And he, he writes the tweets. He gets the content from my LinkedIn and from other places, my website and other things. He writes tweets. He sends it to me, I approve it, and he schedules the tweets. Boom, done. It's really fast. It's really easy. If you want, I can explain this in another session more about the content thing. Um, as far as LinkedIn, I normally sit down once a week and schedule the posts. Like I take, I don't know, a, a three or four hour block when I'm not doing anything else. I sit down, I look at my content ideas, which I've dumped somewhere else, like Microsoft OneNote, and I, I convert them, like write them into a post, put the hashtags, get a photo, whatever it is, and schedule it. Because I can't think about it every day. I just, I just can't. Like every day thinking about posting, oh, it's just so time consuming and overwhelming. But if you do it all in one block, then it's done. Like sometimes I can sit down if I'm having a good day and schedule posts for like two or three weeks in advance and boom, done. Then all you have to do is sit back and wait for the comments to come in, reply, whatever. Um, and if you attend online events, this is just another networking tip. Any online event you attend, connect with all the people present. Sometimes it's not that easy, but I mean, I do a little bit of a cheeky thing when I'm, <laughs> I'll tell you the secret, but it's only for you guys. Sometimes I take a picture of the, the list of names that's on the screen. And then I just go to LinkedIn and connect with all of them. Just enter their names and get all of them and connect. All right, so that's just some tips on networking online. Um, then just about networking itself, like just attend the events in your field once in a while. I mean, I usually make it in a, a point to do about two conferences a year, two to three conferences a year and two to three events a month. Um, research the backgrounds of the other people, plan in advance what you wanna say about yourself, how to you know, introduce yourself. Arrive early so you feel comfortable in the space. You can attend with a colleague. Some people say, no, I prefer to attend alone. That way I'm forced to talk to a lot of people. It's really up to you, whichever style works best for you. Be aware of your body language. Be open and ready to meet new people. Any other tips for face-to-face -face networking? 
heartfelt this, praise. What's that? Sorry. Heartfelt praise works best. Praise. And okay. Praise. 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 Yeah. Praise, praise and be a bit cheeky and be a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and be a bit. Uh, I think especially in France. I mean, Harriet must know this. <laughs> People are very chatty there, right? So you have to really be a bit playful. And uh, yeah, before you get into, basically you have to play ball at the humor level a lot, right? So okay. they yeah, kind of good. like to stay be there, cheeky. right? So, yeah. but, but it depends on the, I think the French are a bit cheeky, right? Others are a bit more jolly. It really depends on, not everyone, of course, right? I but think, it really depends. That's... Yeah, Harriet? No, I just say, I think charisma is, is key. Yeah. True. Um uh they don't want to hear you droning on. Uh true. They're right. Not, true. They're not true, true, that true. serious in that regard. You have a glass true. True. in front of true. you with them. True. Uh English use humor um true. and understatement more. So we all have our our styles. Yeah. Yeah. True, Good, true, to true. Good to know. Authenticity, I guess, huh? Authenticity. 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 Talk from the heart, right? Yeah. Talk from the heart. That's really and important. And throw in the situational jokes, right? So I think that's that's really the magic. And also have good at that's a talent. That's that's really if you're good at situational humor, right? Like mm. I, I would call myself a little bit talented in that, right? So, so okay. I, I tend to always get, get the room laughing, right? So oh, I that's, think that's that's, that's, a, that's a good thing, right? That's, so I that's... think that's a good thing. Huh? So <laughs> that's not easy. Yeah. Good yeah. tips, everyone. Thanks. Yeah. Can I, can yeah, I add so... a word on that one? Yes, please. I, I think that uh, if you want to target a special person, I need you need to do some research back before you meet him. True. Her, so you can connect events, yes. personal names. That makes a big difference. True. Good point. Research the background of the person. Know who you want to talk to. Like, try to maybe think in advance. Okay, I'm going to try and meet these five people or ten people. Or engage with them via LinkedIn, via their posts. Yes. That's also. what I did a lot, right? Yes. So, so then you can get like like a deep comment. I call this deep commenting, yes. right? On a consistent basis. That would be really I've good. I've done that like for a year with, with that Scott Newton guy, right? Oh. He's like a big advisor to CEOs, right? Oh, okay. Um, I've never Newton. met him before, but I this is how I connected with him. And then when he had a trade fair in Dusseldorf, I, I'm based in Dusseldorf, we met and had a chat. And now we're kind of like a little friend. Fantastic, little, right? So that's like a way of uh, connecting or of building real uh, networks based on value. You show I support, yeah. By showing I think that that's, that's mm -hmm. always important, right? That you right. build uh, on mindset and then value, right? So, yes. And of course, it's very time intensive, right? So I spend like I don't know how many hours. Yeah, th that's but, why sometimes but, I wonder yeah. how you how you find time to be so active on LinkedIn because I. I go on there and I want to comment on so many people's yeah. posts and I just like, I'm, there's always something going on that I don't have time to like comment. And I always look at your very active profile and I'm like, how does he do it? Like, how does he, you know, support yeah. so many people? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well done. I kind well of done. like, it's my only network I'm on. Right. So, so okay. um, I like to always, when I do stuff, I do it deep. Right. That's, that's I always say one. go deep or go home. Right. Right. So, right. Do it. So that's yeah. why you should. All or nothing. Always do quick, all or nothing. Right? All or nothing. So, Very good. Yeah. Okay. Just a few more tips. I mean, these are pretty self explanatory. You know, use active listening techniques. Um, ask open ended questions instead of closed ended questions that end with yes or no. Like you get a yes or no as an answer. Ask instead, what would, what do you think about this? How would you, blah, blah, blah. Use, how, what, when, where, why, those kinds of questions. You can also offer something for them. You can try and help them get their contact information, follow up with them. As Torben said, keep commenting on their posts afterwards and show your support. So I think we'll just end with a couple of two, a couple of tips. So number one, networking is just as much about helping others as it is about you getting uh, some professional gain, right? So this is how it works. I mean, what goes around comes around. If you help others, if you can, then they will help you. And it's not only about doing it for a reason. It's about the, the joy that comes when connecting with people and then being able to help them. So another secret to good networking is stay in touch when you don't need people. Because, you know, if you need, if you need people, they can always feel that, right? That's always like a dead giveaway if you're looking for a job or something and you contact someone. But um, yeah, good networking is about like staying in touch all the time. We can follow Torben's example, like, you know, staying really active and supportive on people's posts and things. 
All right, so just a couple of last resources before we finish for today. This is an article I just saw today on LinkedIn, just by chance, how to network from your couch. <laughs> I thought it was interesting. Um, and then I have a couple of YouTube videos in case you wanna, I mean, there's one about tips for networking. It's a lot of the tips we talked about today. And then one of them is specific for building your network as an expat. So if it could be useful, I'll copy this in there. And I think that brings us to the end, unless anyone has anything else to share. Anything at all? I think we got some good topics for some future sessions because as usual, the conversation goes off in many tangents, which is fine. Um, I'm not so fussed about like sticking to the time. I mean, an hour, hour and a half, like I'm free for this, the, the session. And thanks for all of you who've stuck with me until now. And of course, once again, thanks for joining the network. Tatiana, did you want to say something or was that hand up from before? Definitely from before, but oh, okay. no worries. Or later, I'll talk with the rest of you at some point. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, Cheryl, so, I have a question about yes. um, the cultural detective because I am curious. They had so much good content. Like, yes. are the lenses available for use now since there's no te technical property infringement? Unfortunately, it's all been removed. I mean, there was a time before they ended everything that I was in discussions with Diane to possibly take it forward for her, me. And there was another guy in, I think, Colombia that was interested and she was going to put us together and let us kind of continue running the site and, you know, continue the whole cultural detective thing. And for some reason it, it all fell through. Actually, they, what happened before that, if I, can back up a little bit. They were trying to sell it. They had a buyer. And then during the pandemic, whoever was like the, the, the company they chose to sell it to, that company went under during the pandemic. So then it was like they had to start all over again with the bids and finding a buyer. And what, what happened was, in a nutshell, what happened was they... See, Diane was very specific about protecting the integrity of the material and like protecting the rights of the authors. And as you know, it was a really specific program. It was very specialized and it was being updated constantly. And it was written by real people who lived there and all this. So, I mean, Diane was extremely strict about how it was to be taken forward. Like if, if she was going to sell it to anyone, it would have to be done right. You know, it would have to be done where, you know, they, they protect the rights. It's, it's still proprietary material. So you can't just publish it and sell, you can't just, you know, duplicate it and, and, and distribute it. No, it has to be proprietary material. Anyway, um, they didn't find someone else that fit that criteria. They didn't find one that they were satisfied with at least. And then they just decided that they, they were going to close it. And I, and I was really, 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 really devastated by it. So I was really chasing Diane at some point, Diane, and I forgot her companion's name, that guy. Anyway, I had a couple of zoom meetings with them and I was really, really trying to convince them, like, let me take it for, like, let me have, you know, let me be the, be the new manager of it. Me and this other guy from Columbia never happened. I don't, I don't know why she just decided then, like, I'd rather go into retirement calmly and let it, let it fade away, unfortunately. And it's a real, it's a real pity. I mean, those lenses are, they're not available anywhere. You know, it's like, it's just gone. Um, I don't know if they've tried maybe to do something with it since, since we last spoke last time we talked was May of last year. And I think it went offline December 31st last year. Since then, I haven't heard from Diane. So, and I, I don't think she's working in the field anymore either. It's a pity. I don't know why this happened. I, so yeah, that's, that's the unfortunate truth. Okay, thanks. Although it's sad to hear because I yeah. agree the 
fabulous. Such an amazing program and so much specialized information. And so, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's all highly copyrighted. That was the main problem with it. Right. I mean, even if, even as trainers, we couldn't distribute any of the material, we couldn't use it actually, unless we bought, like, I remember I inquired into buying some of the programs and it was so, it was so expensive. It was just not even possible for anyone like unless you're a corporate which is I mean their main clients were corporates like I learned that uh, I learned it at Microsoft and Microsoft is a huge you know multinational they have the money it, it costs fifty thousand dollars I inquired for my university in Saudi Arabia this was the price they gave me fifty thousand dollars so I mean it wasn't exactly easily accessible to people either unfortunately Again, I don't want to say anything negative about it. And because the university didn't buy it? Don't they no. have like deep pockets? No, not that not, not that deep. I mean, <laughs> not that deep. I was I, just going to say, I mean. I mean, I people, guess. I know from Saudi, they, they have quite some change, right? They do so, have money. But the thing yeah. is, I think it's the type of, it's it's an institution, a nonprofit. It's, you know, a university I think it's more beneficial for multinationals like Microsoft. And there were others like Shell and there were other like big multinationals that used cultural detective because they found it really helped when they were doing, you know, trying to sell things in different countries and send staff to different places. So for them, it's like actually, you know, a liability and they, they need it and they can, they can write off the expense. But I think in the case of a university, they didn't have that much motivation to, to use a program like that. Although I, I really tried. In the end, they gave me the institutional online license, which was, I think, like 90 a year or something like that. So I was, but you don't have any materials at all. You can just show it on a screen in a classroom. Like if you want, you can show it on a screen, that's it. But no photocopies, no booklets, nothing, no PDFs even, nothing at all. So it's like, you can only just look at the lens and talk about it and then see, I don't know. So yeah, unfortunately it doesn't exist anymore. But anyway, so great seeing all of you guys. Thanks for sticking with me the whole hour and a half and uh Hope to see you next time. I'm going to put all this info in the network if you missed anything. And of course, the chat goes away once you hang up. So uh, for me, it gets saved. So that's why I can easily just copy paste and put it into the network. All right. Have a great evening and see you soon, hopefully. Yeah. Thank you very much for the great session. Huh? You're Thanks most welcome. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye.